Hello, my name is Dr. Kurt Sander, and this is Music Theory Simplified. Last lesson, we looked at fourths and fifths and octaves, basically what we call perfect intervals. This time, we are going to look at imperfect intervals of the second and the third. And I'm going to show you a few tricks on how to uh, identify major, minor, and diminished and augmented imperfect intervals. So let's get started. Remembering in our last lesson, intervals can fall into one of two categories, perfect or imperfect. Perfect intervals include the unison, octaves, fifths, and fourths, whereas imperfect intervals include seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths. Intervals that are perfect can never be major or minor. One half step larger than a perfect interval is called augmented, and one half step smaller than a perfect interval is called diminished. Intervals, however, work a bit differently. They're either major or minor. But one half step more than major would be an augmented interval, and one half step smaller would be a diminished. So this is a distinction that's important to remember. Also sound different than perfect intervals. In fact, we categorize them as either consonant intervals or dissonant intervals, based on how they sound. Consonant intervals are sweet to the ear and are thirds and sixths, whereas dissonances are seconds and sevenths. Let's start by looking at the most simple of all imperfect intervals, the second. Seconds primarily come in major or minor form, although augmented seconds do occur. Rarely do we ever find a diminished second. It's really helpful to use keyboard visualization to see the second because a minor second is simply two keys next to each other. A major second are keys next to each other but with one in between. If we laid out all the notes from C to C, something we call the C major scale, and we compared them to the piano keyboard, we could see that there are two minor seconds in this scale. One here between the E and the F, again two white notes together, and one over here between the B and the C the other place where there are two white notes together. So these are the only two minor seconds in this entire scale. But let's say we were going to build seconds on each of these notes. Where those minor seconds are would be important to remember. For example, this E to F and that B to C are both minor seconds. But what it means is that the rest of these are all what we call major seconds. That means they always have a black note in between them. So to make these remaining two intervals major seconds, we would either have to raise the ceiling by adding a sharp to the top note, or by adding a flat to the lower note, lowering the floor. So now, these are all major seconds, going all the way up. So you can see how important it is to use the piano as a guide. So let's take a look at the piano keyboard. Here we have F to G. On the piano, there's a note in between. So that's a major second. If we add a sharp to the lower note, they're now touching each other, so that's a minor second. In order to make it a major second, we have to add a sharp to the upper note. And once again on the piano keyboard, there's a note between the two dots. But what about an interval that's larger than a major second? Here we have a major second. What if we raise the ceiling by adding a sharp to that top note G? Well, in this case, we call it augmented. Clearly, keyboard visualization is critically important to identifying seconds. It's so important to keep where those half steps are in your head because you're not going to see them on the staff. And knowing where those half steps are will enable you to differentiate the major second from the minor second. But what about thirds? Well, Western tonal music is largely based on the interval of a third, so we have to find a system for distinguishing major and minor thirds as well. Just like with the fourth and fifth, I have a special phrase for you to remember. It goes like this, C, F, G, major, three. Let's repeat it, C, F, G, major, three. But what in the world does this mean and how can it help us? Well, if we stack thirds on every note of the C major scale, just like we did with the seconds, we'll find that there are only three places where major thirds occur naturally. 
the C, the F, and the G. So if you see a line to a line or a space to space and the bottom note is C, F, or G, you know that it's A major third. And if we can remember this, then any time we come across a C, an F, or a G, we know that it's a major third as long as the accidentals match. What this means also is that all of the other intervals are minor thirds when their accidentals match. So just to summarize one more time, if you have a third and the bottom note is C, F, or G, we say it's a major three when the accidentals match. And if you have any other pitch, which is your bottom note, it's considered a minor third when their accidentals match. Let's try a few and see how you do. Here we have the bottom note, which is F. And if you recall, that's one of our three notes, C, F, G. Accidentals match, it means it's a major third. This bottom note is E. That's not one of our three pitches. Accidentals match, that means it's a minor third. Here is one of our notes, C, F, G, right? This is a C and yet the accidentals don't match. So it's one semitone less than a major third, which we know is a minor third. The bottom note of this interval is an A. That's not one of our three notes. And the accidentals don't match. Now if the accidentals did match, we would know it's a minor third. But since this is one semitone greater than a minor third, we're going to call it a major third. Let's try one more. This is a bit tricky. First of all, it's in bass clef. So our bottom note is E, and E is not one of our three notes. So we know that E to G would be a minor third. But if you look, we've got a flat, and so it's one half step smaller than a minor third. So that interval is a diminished third. Not a very common interval, but you do find them. Well, as you can see, there are methods that make the identification of seconds and thirds a whole lot easier. Uh, the two that we learned today are the keyboard visualization method for seconds, knowing where those half steps are. And the second is to remember C, F, G, major three. When the bottom note is C, F, or G, and the accidentals match, that third is major. Okay, that should give you enough to work on for today. Uh, we'll work more on the sixth and seventh in a later video. Right now, just tr concentrate on getting those seconds and thirds down. As always, this is Dr. Sanders saying, keep it simple. <laughs>